this that we're looking here is the tip of the iceberg of this concept. We're using PouchDB to save data to a database. The data is in the JSON format, J-S-O-N, JSON. This format that we're seeing here is actually pretty universal nowadays. Seeing this JavaScript object notation is quite universal. Twitter uses it, Facebook uses it, so many websites and you know data storage entities use this format which is JSON, JavaScript object notation. And it's simply that things are written in a very specific format. Pouch uses that format as well as its own methods, put, get, and other ones. That's the big idea with what we're going to do. We've got this system with an input field, right? Save comic. Save comic, it's going to ask for all of these things. What's the name of the comic, the year, the number, notes, the publisher, etc., and then eventually taking a photo and such. Well, all of, those, all of those separate pieces of data coming from the input field are going to be bundled together, something like that, and saved into the database. So JSON format is going to be something that we're going to be using a lot in this project. So I think it's really important to really understand JSON format. What I like to do is I like to give like a little quick look at, at, at this in the project here, but then take a sort of a little detour to have a deeper lecture on JSON. And what I kind of said earlier in the class, maybe part one, was you might have all this knowledge of the code and such, but it's not a great idea to just jump into the project and start coding. Even though we kind of did that right now. I wanted to show the example about we're going to write some code like this. It seems perhaps graspable and such, but we should have a deeper plan. So we're going to take a little segue to do this lesson. We're actually, uh, let's go ahead and save your work and exit Visual Studio. Save your work and then exit Visual Studio completely. And let's go to the, let's go to the web browser. And let's go to the website json.org. J-S-O-N dot org. So JSON is a standard that is very common nowadays in data interchange. This is like the official website of the documentation of this project, JSON. So let's browse this site a little bit, and then we'll do this fun activity with JSON, and then we'll get back to our code. Because the better you understand JSON, the more it makes sense in our project as well as many future projects because like I said if you want to make an app that connects to Facebook if you want to pull Facebook feeds and show them dynamically in your app they're gonna give you data in JSON format if you want to make an app that interfaces with Twitter or many other data stores they often interface back and forth with JSON so the better you understand this the better it is so looking at here, JSON is a lightweight data interchange format. It's easy for humans to read and write. You can read the whole info there. The important part, the schematic here. Well, an object is in this format. It needs the opening and closing curly braces. There's some sort of string colon value separated by commas for every amount of, uh, of data. You can put an array in the uh, in the object. So square brackets plus the value separated by commas, all of that in square brackets. So arrays can go inside of JSON data. The type of data that we can store here in JSON is a string, and it's a value can be a string in double quotes, a number. Another object. So you can put a whole JSON object inside of a JSON object. You can have arrays, you can have Boolean values, true or false, or null. Uh, our string data can be any Unicode value. So all the letters A, B, C, all the numbers, um, special characters like upside down exclamation points or Japanese letters or Hebrew letters etc. We have special characters maybe we're gonna have 
you know, we need a, an enter or a carriage return, well, it's backslash r. We can put things in uh, hexadecimal <coughs> four digits, backslash u plus the four digits. Uh, so all of this is in double quotes. And then numbers really fancy here. So uh, you can have optional negative numbers, trailing or pre preceding zero numbers, all the digits, uh, dots, plus the fractions. You can even go up to exponents, positive and negative values, you know, exponential values. Really, really fancy way of saying any number. And then you can read on here, well, how does JSON work in COBOL? How does JSON work in C? Or how does it work in PHP? So really good documentation. Uh, for all of these languages that you may know, how does it work in these languages that I know? And notice it's like all the languages, basically, because JSON is so popular nowadays. We're using JSON in PouchDB to save data to a database. As I've said before, we're going to save uh, the name of the comic, etc. We're also going to save a photo of the comic and the barcode and stuff. Well, now we're dealing with picture data. And it doesn't say anything around here about being able to save pictures into the database. So we're going to have this cool activity here where uh, we're going to talk about how do we use JSON and how do we save pictures to a database if we have the syntax of JSON. So uh, I've got a starting point file for you here, actually. I put it in during the break. If you go back to the network folder, from the network folder, you need to get a copy of the folder that I've got in there called JSON Practice One Start. Copy that folder to your flash drive. So from the network folder, just copy that one called JSON Practice One Start. Copy that to your flash drive. Just copy the whole folder as is. When you copy that folder and you take a quick look inside, it's just got some graphics. You can uh, click the icon there to view the different uh, icons like that. These are some graphics of different <coughs> social networks. For this quick little project that we will do, I want to store in a database a listing of several social networks. I want to store the name of the network, a little description, etc., and the picture. So this is going to be similar to what we're going to do within our, our app. And this will give us more practice in using JSON, reading JSON, retrieving it, dealing with the data dealing with the format, that is, of the data. Uh, we're going to bring up our old friend Notepad++ to do some quick code editing. Um, we don't need Visual Studio just yet. So go back up to your Start menu, and let's load up Notepad++. Remember from last month, we were using this as our main code editor. We've graduated over to Visual Studio because that will allow us to debug on a device and to compile our code for devices. Notepad++ is a plain old uh, code editor. We saw last month, so go ahead and go to Notepad++, File, New. And then File, Save As. We're going to save a file into this folder, JSON practice. We're going to call this db.json, JSON. Save as type. I think you've got JSON from the list here somewhere. I think it's the very last one or somewhere there, JSON, JSON, somewhere. 
should be at the bottom. So select it down at the bottom, db.json, and save this into your folder with those pictures. This is going to be a database where we're going to store various pieces of information of these networks. So in my folder, I've got all the pictures. I've got db.json, and that's what I've got in Notepad. So this file will contain the um, this file will contain the database of these networks. It's in JSON format, so the only thing we can have in this file is proper JSON data, meaning no comments. We're not going to be able to use the usual comment tags in a JavaScript file. So we'll start opening closed curly braces. I'm going to break these into multiple lines. Just for readability, I'm going to tab. Quotes networks, or it'll just say network colon quotes, comma users colon quotes, no final uh, comma. So in this database, we're going to store information about. Let's put it plural, networks. We're going to store information about networks. Be careful here, I did put plural. Sorry about that, put, put networks. We're going to store information about various social networks, as well as various users. So this database is going to have two big chunks of data, the networks and the users. Well, we've seen that we've got um, a key and a value. But what I'm trying to do here is store a lot of data. So actually, instead of quotes, change that to square brackets. This is now an array. I can store many pieces of data, all related to networks. Well, same thing for users. I want many users. If I just had double quotes, colon, double quotes, it's one thing connected to one thing. I want many things, many pieces of data related to this one idea. So all the data regarding the networks is there, and all of the data regarding the users is there. So let's do users. I think this makes a little more sense first. Curly braces again. Well, that's an object. Comma, space, curly braces, comma, curly braces. Without writing any more in here, I've got three users in my user table, so to speak. In the area of my database about all the users, I have three users saved. So this is going to be an object inside of an array, inside of the whole object. OK, let's say quotes name colon quotes Victor. That's one user in the users portion of the database. The thing about JSON is that once you understand it, it's super simple. Oh, 
and you should write it properly and capitalized and such. See what I'm getting at here. We've got we've got um, this one user has one field, their name, comma, another user, their name, comma, another user, their name. If a person um, was registering themselves for our social network, maybe we'd ask them for their name and their email. So we need two pieces of data related to every user. So within the curly braces here, comma, because there's another field, quotes, email, colon, quotes, victor at victor.com. So where this is opening and closing, now this is again all of the data of one user. And of course it's very important that you mind your commas and all of that. Name, field, comma, email field, no comma there because it's the final piece of data in this object, comma, another object. So I need the email field for the other user. Now it's getting harder to read, so I'm going to break this apart into multiple lines. I'm going to break it right here to put that on its own line. And then after this comma, break it there. And after that comma, break it there. This one user, comma, another user, comma. Well, I need the email field for Janet, and I need the email field for Luke. So, comma there, quotes, email, colon is outside of the quotes, quotes for whatever their email is, j at jackson.com. Then we've got for Luke, comma, quotes, email, colon, quotes. Sky at rebels.org. Sure. So one field, comma, a second field, no comma. It's the end of the data. But a comma there because we've got a brand new user. Let's say we need the uh, the, the field. Here's your challenge. Add a new field of age and a new user with the field of age and name and email. Based on what we've got so far, you should be able to do it. Create a brand new user, name, email, age, and add age to all three of those. Give that a try yourself and then I'll do it. Brand new age field and brand new user, make up the user. Age field, give all three of them an age field and create a brand new user. One field, comma, I need another field, comma, inside of the quotes, I mean inside of the curly brace, quotes, age, always double quotes, colon. In this case, uh, numbers, don't use quotes, um, but you put the age, then the next one, comma, quotes age colon 
Anyone know how old Janet Jackson is? Okay, we'll say 53, sure. Whatever, whatever, sure. Okay, and then Luke Skywalker. Uh, how old is Luke Skywalker? Now, of course, I'm talking about the classic movies, not the new ones. So 19 years old, yes, is the right answer. Oh, she's 51. Pretty close. 51, okay, thank you. So, we added a new field, so it needs a comma, H. It's a number, so no quotes. No final comma there, because it's the final field of this one object. But there's, of course, that comma there, because there's a new bundle of data. Comma, because there's another one. Well, the second part of the challenge is you need a new user. One user, two user, three user, fourth user, well, this curly brace closes that user, Luke. We need a new user, comma, at the end of this, before the array ends, because this square brace is all of the data related to users. So we need to put a comma at the end of the last bundle of data, the last object of data, comma there, enter, just for readability. Next line, a brand new object, a brand new user with a name, email, and age field. Quotes name, colon, <coughs> to Maria, comma, quotes, email, colon, Maria. Maria.com and comma quotes age 60. No final, <clears throat> no final comma there, just like before. No final comma there because it's the final user. So here I have four users. which are defined as objects in an array, all part of the user's field. And again, just for readability, you don't have to do this, but for readability, you could also do this. Break this to its own line, and this one to its own line. And the same thing with all of, other, all of these others. So it doesn't matter if it's all on one line, that would work fine, but it's very hard to read, hard to edit, hard to update. By breaking things up here, readable, readable for us, we avoid mistakes. As long as we've written the code properly, there should be no problem. And uh, yeah, the, at a certain point, maybe it does look like a big wall of data, and you can kind of get cross-eyed on it really easily. But that's why I wrote it one way first, and then I broke it into several lines. So you see, well, here's one field, the name field, here's the email field, the age field. All of that is related to one object, comma, the next object, the next user, and so forth for all four of them. These are the four users that are in, the ver that ha that ha that are in various social networks. Those pictures that we've got um, in the folder those are going to be used up here in networks to define those different networks. We won't do all nine or ten of them just yet, maybe one or two to get the idea. But I'm going to back up to networks, and under networks, uh, we're going to define each of those social networks. So I already kind of know what I'm sort of going to do here, so I can already sort of preemptively separate these things. Um, if we divide this up like this, that comma right there is because we've got the first network's data. And we've got the user's data. No final comma here because there's no more data. If we had one more piece of data 
besides networks and users, maybe we have um, comments. These are the comments that people have made in the network. We would comma right there, create a brand new quotes, comments, brackets, and then create the data in there. But what I want here is the same sort of idea in that we're going to have an object We'll do three objects. No final comma, because those are the three pieces of data there. These curly braces I'll break apart here. We'll have name. YouTube, comma, quotes, desk. This is description. Say long form video site. A quick description of YouTube is its long form videos, comma, URL. description of the network, the URL, the address to the network, and a picture. So most databases don't actually store the raw data in the database. Technically a picture, we see a picture as colors and shapes and all of that, but technically a picture behind the scenes is data. It's ones and zeros and, and code. A picture itself is also code. And technically you could you know, if you break down the picture into the actual raw data, that data could go in that field. But it's not very common to actually do that in real databases. It's simply a path to the, to the data. So if you had a folder of images, backslash, you know, picture. But we, I have it really simple in, in our project here. Um, all of these pictures, they're called pic01 ping, pic02 ping. So it's just pick zero one ping. That's a valid path. It doesn't have to be specific with the whole slashes and all of that. The JSON database, db.json, is in the same folder as those pictures. So here I've developed my schema. I've developed my, my scheme. I've developed my idea of how I'm storing my data my data in my database. Down here I, I said I need name, email, and age. Up here I said name, description, URL, and picture. So those four fields define one object. What I'd like you to do then is, based on what I did here, create the next two. These icons are YouTube, Twitter, what's this V here? I should, re I should remove it because it's not around anymore. But yes, Vine. Vine is a network that I like that no longer exists. OK, so YouTube, Vine, Twitter. What's this one here? Google Plus. Google Plus. What's this one here? Pinterest. Pinterest. This one? Instagram. Instagram. Tumblr. Tumblr, a little website called Facebook. And the last one here? SoundCloud. We're only going to do. Yes, I do. He's being social on social media, yes. So, we're only going to do three for the moment. So, the three are YouTube, Vine, and Twitter. Go ahead and create those two other fields in the database right there based on the schema that we've developed. Challenge yourself to create this one and this one as, we've, as I've defined this first one. <laughs> Go ahead and create that. You can do all 10 of them if you want, or 9 of them, but let's just do 3 to start off with. Make up whatever description you want, put in whatever address you want. 
put the picture correctly, pick one, two, three, etc. You just kind of create some data right there. figure out the shortcut to do copy and paste yes. if all of these are the exact same fields just copy name description URL and pick and then change each one what's that this that's a good description extinct social network I'm just going to do these first three. So the idea is that we've we've created a scheme to um, define our data. That's what a database is. You know, if you sort of think about it, this is a database, sort of, where you sign in and stuff. That's a database because it's got columns that everyone uses over and over. There's the column of your name, there's the column of the time, there's the column of total hours. This is like an ancient database, not a digital one, I mean. So you've got these rows and columns of data. It's a database, sort of. This is also a base of data. It's a collection of data. Now we might think about it in terms of, of um, you know, a server and all of that, but a database is just a collection of data. 180 character missives and then twitter.com okay well this is defining our database this is text and pictures and again it's just a link to the picture it's just a path to the picture what we're gonna do then is write a very simple HTML website that connects to this database and then we'll have it randomly load one of these pieces of data. We'll have it randomly display when we press a button randomly choose Twitter and display its picture and have an active link because okay it's one thing to have this data with database but then it's another let's get the data and let's do something with it. As I said Facebook and Twitter when you create an app that interfaces with their database it will spit out something that looks like this. Well, then what do I do with that? That's not HTML. How do I display it on screen, and how do I dynamically deal with this data? So we've got the database. We've got some pictures in the database, so to speak. I want to write some HTML and JavaScript to connect to the database and then randomly pick a, da uh, pick a field and show it on screen. So how do we you know, convert the data that that it's giving us that this is set up in and, and use it in HTML. So I'm going to save this file. Then let's go up to File New. And uh, let's save this. Save this in the same folder as. Um, Save this in the same folder as this project. We'll call it uh, index.html.
we get a brand new blank document, we need to create a very simple HTML project. So we haven't done this in a little while, but remember this about creating the head and the body of a project. If you remember how to turn on the um, code completion, you can do that if you want. This is the stuff we've seen before. So very, very simple here. Ten lines should be enough. This very simple document. The idea is, okay, we've got this database defined somewhere. And imagine even if, if it's not in, in this simple format of JSON, imagine it is on the, on the Google servers. When you connect to Google Maps, for example, if you go look up you know, googlemaps.com, whatever the address is, they will teach you how to, how to connect to Google Maps so that you can load up a map in your app. Well, Google Maps also is going to exist basically in JSON format. I'm sure they've got some sort of proprietary format of data on their servers, but when you connect to the Google Maps server, it'll spit back data at you in JSON format. That's how common it is. You see it all over the place. Well, I want to then tangibly, well, what do I do with this database right here? How do I actually turn that into HTML? That's what we're about to do here. What I want is uh, a button. We actually have a tag called button. I want a button that once I press this button, it'll pick a network. You're going to press the button. It's going to connect to the database, randomly pick a network, show it on screen. Or we can also do it with the user, randomly pick a user. This, ID, uh, this button needs an ID so that the JavaScript can use it, btn um, pick. We want to show the results on screen. Every time we press the button, we want it to display on screen. So we've got a div placeholder with an ID. We'll call this div show. So there will be a button that we click on to, to do all the magic. The result will be that it will then show the network in this placeholder. Now remember, you can go up to run, and then um, here uh, we actually run the, want to run this in Firefox. Uh, Google Chrome is uh, going to give us problems a little later, because um, right now we're doing this project very simply in that we're connecting to this JSON data within our own folder. Oftentimes it comes from a server with security and such. So if we try to run this on Chrome, it might, might complain about security issues. So let's just run this in Firefox. And uh, at the moment, it won't do anything, of course. We're not there yet. But at the very least, you should see this. You should see a button. If you have 12, you shouldn't see any errors. If you click that, nothing happens. But I'm going to set it up. We're going to set this up so that we press the button, we connect to the database, pick a network, show the network. All of that's going to be via JavaScript. So we're going to create a script block. It will be very simple. We won't need to put it in any external document. We'll just put it in this document. And uh, as we've done before, we're going to uh, create the uh, immediately invoked function expression. Remember 
this open close parentheses open close parentheses semicolon function parentheses curly brace so we're going to create this anonymous function that we immediately run this just is better and modern way to write JavaScript short answer those curly braces will be broken up and then we'll have use strict as also the better and modern way to write JavaScript so of course there don't lose track of your curly braces and for n pairs curly brace pair parenthesis pair parentheses here function parentheses use strict semicolon and then we'll start our real JavaScript code so we've seen this before this doing it a little fast and I'll slow down when we do the new stuff but we've seen this before <coughs> we've written HTML and we've made divs and we've added IDs we've done that we've written the basic starting point of JavaScript we've seen that now we can write comments as before uh, but we need to create objects of that button and that div we need to create a JavaScript button uh, a JavaScript object of the button so that we can click the button and do something and we need a JavaScript object to display the results of getting the network on screen VAR to create the object Say L element BTN pick equal to. We don't have jQuery, so we can't do the simple jQuery selector. We have to go back to the and dust off the cobwebs of our mind and do it the classic way of no of no jQuery, classic JavaScript. Remember, document dot get element by ID. We're going to create an object based on in the document object, get, get element method. Let's find some ID and use that as the shorthand for it. Quotes the ID of BTN pick. We're not using jQuery, so no hash mark there because we're saying right here get element by ID so no hash mark no pound sign same thing for the div comma tab l div show equal to document dot get element by ID and remember these open and close parentheses I mean, uh, remember the uppercase I, but not the uppercase D. Quotes div show. semicolon end of line I'm finished making those two objects so now that we've made these JavaScript objects these are like the short shortcuts or the shorthand for these uh, HTML nodes these HTML objects so remember you can select to confirm okay BTN pick BTN pick good div show div show okay good next line function fn get social this is a function that its purpose is to get a social network this is the function where everything will happen connect to the database pick a random network show it on screen so it's a function that we're inventing fn get social 
parentheses, curly braces. And I like to put the comment there because you're going to lose track of that curly brace. So I like to put the comment that tells you that's where the function ends. Uh, usually also I like to make some quick quick console output, something like get social is running. If I see that in my console, it's telling me at the very least that the function is running uh, when I <clears throat> when I expect it. We've got these. We've got this object that should trigger this function. Well, we need the event listener to wait for a click. So we're gonna do lbtn pick dot add event listener parentheses. We're waiting for an event. Remember when we were using jQuery, we just had dot on or dot submit. Those are the shorthands in jQuery. We don't have jQuery, so we have to do the, the long way. Listen for an event, and the event is a click. So quotes here, click, comma. Run a function, fn get social. Comma false, just don't worry about that for the moment. But we're saying in the event of a click upon that button, that button is defined by that. Run the get social function, no parentheses. The syntax here is like this, so no parentheses. But just make sure your get social is spelled correctly. Capital letters, capital letters, and then comma false. That's just the way it is. This is enough for you to run it, to save it and run it, and check the console. This is enough for you to see something in your console when you click that button. Save it and run it. Run it in Firefox, F12, to view your console. You should be seeing some feedback when you click the button. It doesn't work yet, but it should be giving you some some feedback. Let me confirm mine. One quick moment. Pick a network. Get social is running. I clicked it two times. Seven times. So let's do one more pause here for our break. Then when we come back, we'll make this work. Connect to the beta database. Pick a network, show it on screen. It's 8.46, we'll take a break until 8.56. Here's the code so far. If you've got any errors in Firefox, let me know. It's not too much so far, so let's make sure it works.